Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Talk Show. We are once again with Ken Enderby, the president of Climate Action Burwood Canada Bay, a local climate action group in the Burwood Canada Bay area. And right now we uh, wanted to talk to you about what it looks like to actually get involved with an action group. What does it look like for you personally? So, Ken, what are the kinds well, of things that you I've been involved in a lot of groups. I've been an activist for 43 years now. Uh, so you I've been... You told me a lot of stories about that. Yeah, yeah I've been stuff. involved in all sorts of groups. I've been involved... I was with uh, People for Nuclear Disarmament uh, originally. I was involved with a human rights group working in the Philippines during the Marcos period. I've been involved with groups involved with Latin America, uh, organising against the dictatorships that were rife... 40 years ago, I've uh, been involved with Amnesty International on various human rights projects. Oh, I've been yeah, actually want to some funding for them because um, yeah. I used to work for a charity fundraising company that worked with a bunch of different charities. I actually did some fundraising for them once. For Amnesty? Yeah, Amnesty International. Oh, okay. Yeah. Also, yep, my uh, daughter worked. Yeah, you my daughter HCR works full time for Amnesty International. Oh, cool. Uh, mm-hmm, yeah. So uh, I've been involved with groups in Europe. Um, protesting against cruise and Pershing missiles. I was involved with groups that were smuggling messages and literature into Eastern Europe. <laughs> now, we're not suggesting that anybody who joins up and becomes active in um, an activist group would be smuggling messages into dictatorships and things to people yeah. who are government. I imagine that's a bit <laughs> but, more... But I've done a lot of those more things. More recently, science. I've been involved with, with human rights in the Middle East, Mm. Uh, I'm still peripherally involved in that. But for the last four years, I've been exclusively doing um, a climate action. Uh, perhaps I should talk a little bit about my own involvement. Um, when I retired, <clears throat> I, uh, I briefly went away uh, for about two months. And then when I came back, one of the first things I did was to join the local climate group, which had formed up maybe eight months uh, prior to that. Um, and I literally heard about it from a fair that I went to. They weren't there, but there was another climate group there that uh, said, look, if you want to join a climate group, ours is not the group to join. You should be joining this group in your local area. Or it's quite new. So I contacted the person who was running it, and I went along to my first meeting. There were perhaps seven, eight people at the meeting we sat around a table and we talked a bit about climate change and the policy and the problem and some of the things that people might do. And I put up my hand and said, look, I will do whatever you've got going. Uh, I'm quite happy to do hack work. And by hack work, you know, in the old days, that literally meant uh, folding up letters, stuff, shoving them in envelopes, mm. yeah, <laughs> making the envelopes, putting a stamp on it's them. It's to refer to as uh, grunt work. Yeah. That's grant work. These days, grant work you know, involve things like letterboxing, um, uh, standing on street corners with signs. That's the sort of thing that mm. the group was doing in those Handing days. Handing out flyers. I remember we did now that. Now we, we don't do any of those sort of things. We're, we are able to put on really big events. We're, mm. we're able to do big stuff now and get the the, pal the politicians to turn up. Yeah, really, up meeting really federal works. State, state politicians. Yeah. But we didn't start out that way. We started out in a very small way so uh but the main thing i put my hand up for is is they they didn't really have anybody who was well educated on the issue every group has to have a spokesperson mm. and i then said well look i will enroll at university and do a course on climate science and oh wow try at least you haven't told me yeah That's... so as it turned out COVID struck and I was bloody lucky I'd enrolled in this course because we couldn't do anything other than sit around at home. So I literally studied 20 hours a week uh, for months uh, doing this course and I then became the spokesperson who would give talks and you know respond to people who uh, were denying either the existence of climate change or um, the role of humans in causing it. So those are the sort of things that, that we started out doing. Uh, I eventually um, stepped up the ladder, got on committee, uh, became chairperson, and then ultimately uh, president uh, of the group. Yeah. 
And I remember so if someone actually... was to join the group now, the kind of things that they would be doing, we wouldn't be asking them to dock, knock on doors or letterbox. We don't do those things anymore because they're not very effective and people don't mm. like doing them. They're labour intensive and they don't they don't get you anywhere. Mm. We don't go to people. We go somewhere where people will come to us where instead mm. of, you know, dealing with one person or two people. It's the, uh, the various festivals and, and open days uh, that, right. that Cab Cab uh, Climate Action Debate has, has been at. The main thing we ask people to do now is perhaps be on our stall at a fair mm. and come, you do two hours work at the stall, handing out our flyers, talking to people. If they have tricky questions, then you refer them on to, to someone like me who might be able to answer those questions. Um, so, yeah, that, that's pretty much the main thing. We, we put on a fundraiser, say, uh, where we did a sausage sizzle at Bunnings, which you were involved in, Kyle, as I well remember. Yeah, and... I remember. I remember that. Right. So remember we asked I made this huge to... joke there. I was I OK, so basically I, I, I sent this really pretentious like text message, um, just like, you know, pretending to be all majestic as I as I wheeled on in some rollerblades uh, backwards. That's right. But you missed that. it entirely. I remember that, that right. Yeah, but um, yeah, but, yeah so, that was really fun, you know. And um, I mean, funny enough, um, the reason why I ended up getting involved with uh, with Climate Action Burwood Canada Bay is uh, is is because I actually I met uh your son uh James and mm-hmm. and um and he actually you know I asked if he was related to. He said you know yeah he's my father and and you know he told me you ran it. Um, you know that was actually what uh what got me to uh to to get involved in, in the first place is knowing um that you were involved with that um did you, and that you, did you wind up coming to that pub crawl that james organized um i don't think I, I i remember i was at a a pub night but it wasn't a pub crawl well, um, pub night. It, well, it was supposed yeah, to be a yeah, pub yeah. crawl but the group never got past the first pub <laughs> <laughs> we we yeah. ran a, a we ran something called the big climate picnic uh mm. in um in burwood <clears throat> and we had a lot of groups we had 500 people turn up to it we had music and all manner of things food it was great and i think it might have been my son james who jokingly said why don't we have the big climate piss up <laughs> and and we thought what do you mean and he said oh we have a pub crawl for young people we thought go for it so he just advertised it yeah, Probably that's actually that's that's right. that, yeah that was and where some I met of those him. have stayed in the group. Yeah, that's where I met him. I um I was invited. Uh, somebody else invited me. Then I met him. Found out, you know, he's related to you, and you were sort of running it. And I was just like, you know what? I'll you know Ken's there. It's uh you know I know it's um because again you were my teacher. You know, oh, what, all the way back in 2012 for, for modern history. Um. And so immediately I was like, you know, where do I sign up? And and then two weeks later was the uh, federal election um, where Cab Cab had a huge impact. Um, you know, uh, if I remember correctly, Cab Cab was one of the deciding factors in that uh, in the election of Sally Satel. It was. That really made us as a group. Yeah. Uh, we, the story on that is that... <laughs> We had a meeting after Sally. We, we tried to make contact and we had a couple of meetings, not very successful, with mm-hmm. the Liberal candidate, Fiona Martin. And in the end, she stopped taking our calls. We couldn't get anywhere there. So we thought, let's let's explore the Labor candidate, see what she's like. So we had a, we set up a meeting with, with Sally Sidhu at um, the Olympic Park, actually, at a cafe there. And she brought along Chris Bowen, who is now the uh, Climate and Energy Minister, he was the shadow minister at the time. Well, we spent like, the whole meeting talking with Chris Bowen about what Labor's policy at a minimum would have to be if there was any chance that we could mobilise people to support a vote for Labor in the election. Mm-hmm. And, uh, look, he couldn't really tell us, but he did say you, you won't be dissatisfied. Uh, that We will pass the minimum pass mark <laughs> that's required. <laughs> And so once that uh, policy was announced, the 43% emissions target, we set up another meeting with Sally. Uh, it was a couple of months later and started to think about, well, what might we be able to do? And then we mobilised about 50 people for that election campaign. Mm. It was very difficult to get a compromise on you know, what, what we would ask for. But essentially, the slogan we came up with um, 
we're asking for people to vote, you know, either Labor or the Greens uh, or the Fusion Party, which was also had a good mm. climate policy in the House of Representatives, and vote Greens or one of about five other parties in the Senate that had yeah. good policy. If, if, if I remember correctly, the um, the flyers uh, all they basically they had all the parties with decent climate policies on it. Um, yeah. And it, it kind of, you know, for the Senate, seemed to recommend them pretty, pretty equally. You well, know, these it's are not quite. We, we gave prominence in the House of Representatives to Labor because, and only because, not because it had the best policies, but because it had a chance of winning. The Greens mm -hmm. couldn't possibly win in the House of Representatives. So there was no mm -hmm. point asking people to go out and vote Green. Mm -hmm. uh, and we found out, we had a, um, uh, an analyst come and speak to us when we first set out on this, who said, who analysed the figures and said, look, 20% of people in the electorate of Reid vote, who voted Green as their first preference, but their second is their second. Liberal Party. Yeah. That's I, right. I, I and, was, and I've heard, I, funny you should say that, because I've heard that completely independent of, of like you and Cab Cab. I've heard the exact same thing. Apparently, that's a, that's a, that's a phenomenon everywhere with the Greens. It's yeah. basically, you know, about 20% end up going straight, yeah. straight so to Liberal as their second what? preference. We, we really need to, to make a hard call on this. So we essentially asked people to vote Labor in the House and Green in the Senate. That was, mm. that was they were the people we gave, the, the parties we gave the preference to. Mm. And uh, only because the government, the federal government, was so awful on climate, there really was no policy on climate. Yeah. Uh, and it, we really forced our hand on this. You know, we didn't feel comfortable having to do it. Far better in the New South Wales state election, the recent one, we didn't take a position on it because mm. the two part, major parties basically had very similar policies on renewable energy and climate. So mm. we just didn't think that that we had any role to play. Um, uh, so we stayed out of it. But we ran this big campaign. We had 50 people. We were there at pre-polling. Boy, we did the whole thing. Uh, we were there six days a week at pre-polling. So we did... Mm. It was um, 11 days. Yeah, I remember I, I think morning, I was night. there for one or two days, that pre-polling. That's right. Um, we had and then between two the, and uh, four people there. And yeah. we had a massive impact. We handed out 20,000 flyers. We had a massive impact on that campaign. You could just feel climate. And Sally City, the Labor candidate, ran on two key issues, climate and accountability. Um, mm. You can almost say that that election was very much about climate and accountability. That it entire was. Election. That's exactly what it was. And, yeah. and uh, you know, we saw yeah, her today. She was there only this morning at this at our action. Mm. And we've got on very well because we've demonstrated that we can shift votes. That's mm. what politics is all about. If you can shift yeah, votes. Yeah, see, that, that, yeah. that right there is, I think, why I, you know, why I um, I, wanted, I wanted you so desperately to, to come on this show and actually talk about it mm. is because I, I wanted to show people that, you know, you really can make a difference, you know, with even just a local group, you know, one yep. seat in parliament can make the difference between government or, or not government, you know, and, yep. and that, that can, you know, in, in that election, it, it's, it was only a few seats difference, you know, if, if, and, and so, you know, we made a difference with 50 people, you know, yep. and, and that was how many hours on average? 850 each? hours we did at polling and pre-polling. Yeah, so that's that's three hours for each person. You know, that's that's really you know on average three hours per person. Hours. <laughs> yeah, well, well, you know, well, look, on we average, had two yeah. people running the campaign: Richard Bolt on the phone organising the roster, and mm -hmm. I did I did the groundwork. I was there at pre polling every day, getting all the the flyers, getting the banners, the core flutes, and everything out to people, and coaching them in what they needed to say and how to do it. You know, and our opening spiel, I'm not from one of the political parties. I'm with the local climate action group. Yeah, I found that worked really well. A lot of people well. stopped to talk to us. Uh, yeah. Well, so many yeah. people stopped yeah. to like, talk to I, us. Because I've done polling and pre-polling before um, for, for a couple of different parties, um, you know, some less deserving than others, uh, unfortunately. Um, but, yeah, it's I found, like, nothing worked better than than that right there you know and that's and that's really the the key and that's why i'd, I'd very very much recommend to people that they get involved with with sort of um non-party groups you know action groups yep. because you know we made a difference in 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 the electorate of reed you know we, we did yeah we we changed and that electorate we you know we flipped it 
And we did. And look, it, it would be great if we didn't have to do that. I don't feel comfortable doing that sort of stuff. I don't like mm -hmm. it. I am hoping we don't have to run another campaign. But if we have mm -hmm. to, we will. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm hoping we don't. In the meantime... Uh, You're a very we're... nice and diplomatic person. Pardon? You're a very lovely and diplomatic person, you know. Well, I don't... Whereas you know, me, I'd be, I'm, I'm like super ruthless. I'd just be like, yeah, no, that's got to do what we got to do. Let's go. You're yeah. Just, yeah. Lovely. Yeah. Person. Anyway, um, so, um, yeah, people get involved. And, and when you get involved, you get involved only to the extent that you feel comfortable. So mm. you don't necessarily throw yourself in and give it everything you've got. You see, you have a feel about it. You see what yeah. the group's like. If it's a group, you know, if it's a good group, then it's going to be uh, run collectively, not one person making all the decisions. Mm -hmm. It's going to have people who feel good and like each other. It's going to have some fun. Like we did a trivia night uh, last year. I, um, I think you missed out that night. I did we miss had, out. I, I couldn't make it. I, I can't. We had 77 I remember, people. I think I had something on. We had, mm -hmm. uh, it was a wonderful night. It was aimed at not just at educating people who came as well as, you know, people who already had knowledge. Uh, and uh, we raised a lot of money. We made $1,700, I think, from the trivia night. It was very, very good. Um, yeah, see, see that's what a team time. effort can do. It can, you know, you can, yeah. can get resources, pull those that's resources. That's right. And, you know, and we've, we've run over time, but, like, that's, you know, I'd say that's very much the point, you know, that needs to be made is that, that a, an, a small action group, can make such a difference as that. Yeah. Well, look, Kyle, we were, two years ago, we were half a dozen people sitting around a table thinking, what can we do? Now we're in a position to put on big actions and, and get the politicians to turn up at them and pay attention to us. We've gone from nothing to something and it feels great. <laughs> it, it, it should, you know, and, and it's incredibly inspiring, you know, and just yeah. being part of that, you know, in, in the sort of small way that I've been has been, you know, like it's, it's, it's been wonderful. You know, I can't really describe the feeling, you know, it's just wonderful to have been a part of that. And, you know, I promise anyone out there that, that you'll probably feel just as wonderful as, uh, as I have. And, you know, I think with that, we'll end it because again, we've run over time, um, but we'll catch you later. Thank you for watching. Thank you again, Ken, and we'll see you in the next episode.